What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Seed Style DIY 350Z wide body project. We are now into the front fenders and in my last video I went over everything that I need to do this project, at least the way that I'm going to be doing it. And now we are going to jump right into the process here. I'm not going to be doing too much talking this time because the whole last video was pretty much just me talking and I know you guys want to see the work get started so that's exactly what we're going to do. So the first process here, as mentioned in the last one, is that we're going to go ahead and protect all this work area right here. We don't want any of the resin or the gel coat or anything to make contact with the actual surface of the car. So we're going to protect it and we're going to use our packing tape to do that. Now this is an industrial grade packing tape. It's a little bit thicker than your, your typical 99 cent store stuff. And so that's just going to add a little bit of an extra layer of protection so that the resin does not penetrate through here. Now this also serves as a great release agent for fiberglassing as well. It's one of the other reasons why I love the packing tape is the resin will not stick to this. It'll stick to it, but it will release very, very easily. So that's going to, it's going to serve a double purpose, not only protecting the paint, but also as our release. So that's going to be the first thing we're going to do is cover all of this entire front fender, the whole headlight right here, a lot of the front bumper, this whole portion down here that uh, is going to have fiberglass or any, any kind of chemical on it whatsoever. And we're going to cover up the Z logo in the back here because we don't want any, any paint coming off of that. And we're also going to mask off the side skirts, we're going to mask off the wheel hub, and anything that you don't want uh, changed or damaged or anything like that, we're going to go ahead and protect. So let's go ahead and get started, start wrapping up. Now as I'm laying this stuff up, one thing that's important to note is that you want to lay it up as flat as possible. You want to minimize the amount of wrinkles and bubbles that you get in here. So uh, if you're not comfortable with doing long strips like this, if you just get too many wrinkles and too many bubbles, then just do small strips at a time and really lay it up as flat as you possibly can. If you do get an excessive amount of bubbles, what I would suggest is just take a little exacto knife or a sharp pin or something and poke those little bubbles out and then just put a small piece of tape right over the hole that you just made because the resin will seep into the hole but you'd rather have to double up with a tape with a little patch than have a bubble or a wrinkle there that will translate into the fiberglass underneath so get the tape on there as flat and as flush as you possibly can to the body of the car other than that just uh, lay it up in as big as strips as you can the, the longer the strip the shorter it's going to take you to do this but it's better to be safe than sorry, so take your time with it if necessary. Another little tip here that's actually fairly important when you're doing this kind of work is around these critical body lines, like the headlight line here and the door seam over here, when you're laying up your, ta your tape, you want to actually push it down into those creases so you can maintain the body line. That way when you lay your fiberglass up and you apply your resin to it, it'll actually translate that line to the fiberglass underneath so that when you start doing all your trimming and stuff like that, you'll be able to follow that body line on the bottom to get a perfect line where you need to cut it. If you just lay your tape up over the body line, then those body lines are going to disappear in the fiberglass. You're not really going to know exactly where to cut unless you cut from the top. And uh, that can be really tricky because you don't know exactly where you're cutting when, you're, when you can't see the body line underneath the fiberglass. So keep that, the little indentations in the, in the, uh, the body lines here. That way when you lay up your fiberglass, you'll be able to see those body lines and cut it out from the, the underneath. Just a little tip, you don't have to do it, but it'll make your life a whole lot easier.
All right, so after about a good 20 minutes worth of masking time, I've got a really nice barrier of protection here and a nice barrier to help release the fiberglass when we lay the fiberglass right over the original fender here. Now, as I had mentioned, I was very careful to maintain as many body lines as I could, particularly right around the headlight here is a very important one for this design if you're gonna be following something like this design. And also the, uh, the hood line right here, as I run my finger across it, I can still feel the indentation there as opposed to just laying the tape right over there. So I pressed the tape into that line so I could maintain that body line. And of course, back here at the door seam, it's really nice, I uh, maintained that line as well. I also went and took liberty with the tape and I went way beyond the area of operation here just to be safe. I am now gonna be going in with Polymasker. That's the same stuff that I've used in the past. It's got one small little half inch strip of adhesive tape on one side and the rest is just basically like a trash bag type of plastic. I'm gonna be masking off everything, this whole top section, this way toward the hood, all the way across the top. I'm gonna to be using it all the way across the bottom here, all this area that we're not gonna to need to work on at all. The hub, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a trash bag over the hub, and I'm gonna be using the poly masker on the backside, same exact process. So let's go ahead and finish up our protective measures. Okay, so at this point we have adequate protection across the entire work area. In fact, even beyond the work area, I made sure to extend it just a little bit further, just in case there's any splashes or any drips or anything like that that may get out of, out of the work area. I wanna make sure I protected the splitter and the diffuser and everything. So I went in with the poly masker, made sure that was completely covered. Uh, same exact thing over the headlight and this front portion of the hood right here and across this entire area. I'm gonna add one more little piece of tape right here to cover that little gap. But uh, other than that, we are looking really good. More poly masker down there because we're not gonna be working in that area. The flare design comes to about right here. So I didn't really need to keep going with the masking tape any further than this. I just went ahead and used the poly masker from this area down. But over through the door, you can see this whole area right here is also covered in the masking tape just in case any of the resin got over into this area. I didn't want the paint on the door to get damaged at all. As I was saying about the door seams and the body seams all over the front, make sure you press that tape into the seam so you maintain the seam when you lay your fiberglass over the top. Same thing on the top here, this body line right here. I can still feel that body line really defined as I run my finger across it. And probably most importantly, at least for this design, is this headlight line right here. I made sure to really press that tape into the headlight line because you want to make sure that uh, your flare fits perfectly over that shape right there. So we are looking real good. Now the next part of the procedure is going to be fixing our temporary polyurethane universal flare onto there to give us a base to work on. Now that we have adequate protection, we can go ahead and put this guy on. We're just gonna tape it on there. It has to be in a fairly exact position to match the other side. I have these things cut out so that they fit really only one certain way. I have the front portion cut out so that it matches that body line right there. And then in through the back here, we are actually gonna cut a little bit of the tail end of this off because the design of our new flares extends from about the middle of the badge down to about this portion right here. And when I lay this thing up there, you can see that that clearly extends beyond that area right there. So we're gonna end up cutting off a little bit of that tail end right there. But before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and take a template on the other side here so that I know exactly where that line is. I'm not just guessing. I'm gonna make a template of this line right here. And how I'm gonna do that is just lay up some masking tape or packing tape, same kind of tape. I'm gonna lay it uh, right across here 
pressing into the crease of the badge here and across this line and all the way down. And I'm gonna just make sure I have that line really nicely pressed into the tape. And then I'm gonna take my Sharpie marker and I'm gonna go ahead and, and trace that line all the way along the badge and all the way down this line as well. Then I'm going to remove all of that tape all in one piece. Bring it over to this side again. Lay it up in the exact position. It won't be difficult to do because we have a lot of reference points. The uh, circle, bottom circle portion of the badge here, the door line, and I'm also gonna trace this line right here. So we should get a fairly accurate line. It's something about like this, and then it comes down to about right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take that template right now so that I know exactly how much of the tail of this universal flare I need to cut off. All right guys, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and used that template that we made on the other side to go ahead and show me exactly where the bottom part of the overfender is going to come down to. <clears throat> there may be a slight, slight variance, but it's going to be very minimal and won't impact the uh, the overall design at all. It will translate very nicely. But just to be sure we get as accurate as we possibly can, I'm gonna go ahead and double up with my, uh, my tailoring measure tape right here and I'm going to take a measurement from this bottom body line right here up to the base of the over fender right here and I'm going to make sure that that's exactly the same or very very close on both sides and then I'm also going to take a measurement from this point here to the body line and then this point here diagonally down to the body line as well. That's just to cross reference and make sure that you're as close as you possibly can get but so far it's looking really good so let me take these measurements real quick. All 
All right, so after cross-referencing with my tailoring tape, I just made a slight adjustment, like less than an eighth of an inch right there. Just raised that line up a little bit, and it's just gonna get me a little bit of a closer accuracy. It was already very, very close. In fact, these lines right here are perfect. No adjustment was necessary, and uh, just this little line needed to come up by about an eighth of an inch or less. So now we are in perfect position, or definitely close enough at the very least, uh, to go ahead and lay up our polyurethane Universal flare back up on there and that will tell me exactly how much of that I should cut off So you can see there as I have it in the rough position that it's going to be You can see where that end part right there the tail part is coming over my line I'm gonna to want to go ahead and tape the flare onto the fender and then just sharpie marker right over that area where I need to cut that off because if I leave that there it's gonna interfere with my clay I'm gonna to have to cut it off while there's clay on the car and the clay starts to get crazy when it heats up and starts flinging everywhere if you're cutting into clay. So we wanna get rid of that right now. So I'm gonna tape this thing onto the car and just cut away as much as I need to right now. So now that we have the universal flare set into the rough position that it's going to be with a few pieces of tape, I'm going to actually take it a step further and take my measuring tape again and head over to the other side. Before I cut, cut the flare itself, I'm going to actually take a reference from this portion right here so that I know exactly where this dip starts to come in toward the body right here. And it's not going to, I'm not going to be able to get exactly where it's at, but I'm going to be able to get very close by taking a measurement from this point right here up this way and then a measurement from the back inside of the sidewall right here up this way and then bringing the tape this way a little bit. It should be very, very close and I've measured it already once before so I know that this should be about five and three quarters inches long. So I'm just going to take a measurement from here again and then reference it on the other side and it should get us a lot closer to where we actually need to cut off that universal flare. So with the new measurement that I took, I've determined that this line right here, this upper line is going to be our cutoff point right here. This was my very, very first rough guesstimate and then I reconsidered and then rough guesstimate again and came up to here and then with the measuring tape, it confirmed that it's just a little bit higher. So you can see how the artist eye, it starts to get close, but then when you take actual measurements, you can see how there is definitely a little bit more of a precise point that you can reach, that you can get to. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off right there with our Dremel tool. I've got a little diamond cutting disc already affixed to my Dremel, as you can see there. This is a workhorse tool for me. Like I said, this thing has cut so much stuff, I couldn't even begin to tell you. It'll make very short work of that polyurethane in there, but of course I'm gonna pull this off the car first because it, it can definitely get through that and get into my fender, and I don't wanna put any nicks or scratches or cuts into my fender itself. So I'll pull it off of there, we'll make that cut, and then we'll put the, the flare back up on the car, and then, before we do any sculpting or anything like that, I'm gonna actually head to the front and I'm gonna make some templates for the front area as well. Might as well get all that out of the way right now because when we start to lay up our clay, you wanna make sure you have all of your lines, especially the outlines, so you know exactly how much clay you need to lay up and you're not just laying up a ton of extra clay that you don't even need. So let's get that cut off and then we'll head to the front and do some more templates. So we have this section 
cut very cleanly now at this point. The Dremel tool got right through it, no problem. And we went ahead and fixed the universal flare back onto the car in the correct position. If we had left, left that tail, you could clearly see how it would have gotten in the way of our clay sculpt that we have to sculpt up right here. It would have interfered greatly and we'd, we would have had to try to cut it away as we're sculpting, which would not have been fun at all. So with that cut out of the way, that's gonna open up this whole area for us to just sculpt right on top and right into this. And then after we have the wood and everything on here and it's all blended, we're gonna go ahead and, and fiberglass over the whole thing and it will all become one seamless piece. It'll be very nice. So now that we have that squared away, we're gonna move to the front portion at this point and we're gonna start making templates just like we did over there. We're gonna start making some templates of the front portion of the over fender, uh, namely the line that comes down in front of the headlight right here down to about this portion and follows this body line right here to the inlet. Uh, we're also going to take the outline of the canard right here, that's very important, as well as the point at which the over fender comes down right about to, to here. But that line is going to tell us exactly where it needs to go, or at least very close. I don't believe I'm going to need to cut any of this away, but uh, I'm going to take another look just to make sure because the clay sculpt, the, the front cap right here pretty much builds up all the way out here. So anything that's underneath the clay that we can sculpt over, I should not need to cut away. But uh, like I said, I will make sure and uh, if we do need to cut it away, I'll show you guys all of that as well. So let's get started making some templates of the front section. All right guys, so as you can see, I've went ahead and used my templates that I made on the other side to mark off the exact locations of our detail areas right in the front there. It is very, very close to the other side. I used my measure tape here in several areas to guarantee that I have a very, very close match. Uh, there's a couple of areas that may be slightly off, but uh, that will not be a problem once we go in and start doing all of our detailing and our sanding and our cutting. We'll make sure at that point that everything is spot on. But uh, I triple checked this to make sure all of my lines were correct on both sides I referenced and uh, it's looking great so far. You can see how all those lines right there are lining up just perfectly. Everything like I said was measured with the tape as well as the templates. Here's my templates that I used right here. They lined up perfectly. The bumper was perfectly symmetrical with the other side so I was able to use these lines right here to help me out a lot. So. There's our details right there in lines on the front. 
So the next step is to go ahead and securely fasten the universal flare to the body of the car. And then we're gonna go ahead and apply our wood pieces, our wood wedges onto the side there to extend the width by about another three quarters of an inch or so. And then we're gonna completely cover it in packing tape to create that barrier of release for our fiberglassing. After that, we're gonna go ahead and get our clay out, start doing our sculpting in the back and in the front to get those details started. Then we'll go ahead and use the PVA to protect the clay because we will then go in with the fiberglass and start doing all of our glassing. Once the glass is complete, we'll go in with our gel coat layer and start the refinement. We are moving along here, guys. Let's get going. All right, so we've now got the wood applied all the way across the sidewall there. You can see there's two layers. That's how much width I needed to add to it. And the way that I determined exactly how much I needed to add was I went ahead and I made up templates. You can see one right there and one right here of the sidewalls on the completed over fender. I did the exact same thing. I used the packing tape and I laid about three layers of packing tape up to this point right here and then just traced these lines did the same thing on the other side, right here. Laid it up to about here, so I captured this very important corner line right here. And then the bumper line right there was very important as well. And of course, obviously, this line here. So I made those templates. I lined them up in the exact same positions on this side, and that told me exactly how much width. You can see that line right there that's coming up to the sidewall exactly how much width I needed to add in order to get symmetrical with the other side. You see on the other side as well. So I needed to add, here's the line right here. It comes up right there. You can see that black line right there. And then in the back, you can see that black line right there. That's how much width I needed to add. So this design is just a slight bit wider right in the front right here. So you can see as I back up, slightly wider right here in the front. You can see that the way the wood is shaved there, just a little bit wider. And that just creates a straight line all the way back, just like that. So after I had the two layers of the wood pieces stacked onto the sidewall there, I took my palm sander and very carefully shaved away exactly how much I needed to shave down toward the back here until we got down inside that black line. So those templates came in very, very, very handy to let me know exactly how much width I was gonna need to fiberglass over to get very close to the width on the other side. Now, of course, once we lay the fiberglass and everything over, there's still going to be a little bit of adjustment to do. There always is. That's where the body filler and all that will help to even everything out, and then we'll make it super straight and everything. But we're definitely close enough at this point. 
You'll also notice on either side that I cut away the wood right there. And in the back, you can see that as well. It's cut across straight right there. That is exactly where the over fender comes up to. You can see that crease line right there. That's that important crease line that I was talking about on the other side. As you look at it through the front there, you can see how that comes to just about that crease line. That's where I'm gonna be building up the clay right up into that area right there. And we're gonna be creating that nice line right there. But if this wood had been in the way right there, then I would have had to have cut it away. So I went ahead and cut that away ahead of time before I started my sculpt so it's not in the way. Same exact thing on the other side. And I purposely cut these a little, a little higher so that uh, I can sculpt the clay up into it. Uh, it's better to be safe than sorry and cut up a little higher than cut too low and have to cut a little bit more off after you start sculpting. So there's a, there's a line from the front all the way through the back. And I just took my long wooden ruler, my straight ruler, this guy, and I just lined it up so that it was fairly approximate on both sides, a nice match, and uh, made some, some cuts. They didn't have to be absolutely perfect right now, but uh, they give me a good general idea and they line up fairly well with my templates. Okay, so our wooden side pieces on the side wall are looking real good. We can now go ahead and start taping everything up. I'm gonna take my packing tape and thoroughly wrap this whole thing right here.